Good morning. You know, uh, Betsy mentioned Glenn Kirk being the family. And uh, we really are, aren't we? I mean, truly. We have our, you know, our, our worship family. We have our small group family. We have the pastoral staff and support staff family. And as she was, think, as she was speaking, I was thinking, you know what, in, in the staff, Tim's kind of like the dad. <laughs> and Bethy's kind of like, symbolically, the mom. <laughs> and they're watching over all of us. You know, and uh, it's just a really a fun thing. And we can have some fun. We laugh at staff and really enjoy being with each other. And uh, it got me thinking about the sermon. And uh, I remember when I was about 10, G.I. Joe's came out. And about every boy on the street had a G.I. Joe of some kind. And we had great times playing with these action figures, you know, just we had all the equipment and everything, and we just had a great time. And now my little granddaughter, who's five, loves action figures, especially the, the, the woman, the female action figures, the Wonder Woman. Every, you know, she, has, she can't get enough of that. And I was thinking, uh, each action figure seems to have something that represents them in some way. But have you ever been looking for something or trying to figure something out? And when you find it, you say to yourself, it was in plain sight the whole time. You know, how, how could I have missed it? Well, we all know that Pastor Tim is a gifted individual. He truly is. Ph.D. in Old Testament. I've known Ph.D.'s. That's about as close as I've ever come. <laughs> the man can preach. Am I right? I mean, come on. I mean, I, I mean, every week it's just, you know, it's filled with good stuff. And you come away believing you heard God's word. Believe me, I've been in situations where I've come away wishing I'd have heard God's word at times. You know, in, in staff, he leads this well. He knows how to start a meeting. He knows how to end a meeting he, and, and, and do it on time. Counseling, mentoring. Kind of just a cool guy. And he's tall. <laughs> and, I, you know, and I was thinking, what is his secret? You know, if, if, if I was thinking, when you think of Moses... You think of Moses with the staff, right? And yet that's a picture, you know, Charlton Heston, the staff, the whole thing. You, th you think of Samson, you think of hair. And we can rule that one out. <laughs> you can think of Elijah, you know, the mantle, the cloak of Elijah, and, and how that was symbolic of Old Testament prophets, and he passed it down to Elisha. Then there's David. You think of David, you think of the slingshot, right? Yeah, yeah. So what is it with Tim? It, and then it hit me. <laughs> and it was in plain sight. If there was going to be a Tim Fear action figure, it would have scarves on it. <laughs> now I gotta tell you, this has become a little troubling. No. Nah. He always wears a scarf. I, I, don't, I, I think something's wrong. I don't know if his, he keeps his, well, who does he think he is, Andrea Pacelli or something? I don't know. He wears scarves to staff around the office, you know, and, and I don't know if I've ever seen one person wear a scarf as much as he does. But I began to think about that. There's a reason. It's the superpower. It's the symbol. He wears it all the time. So the way I figure it, if Tim Fuhrer needs a, to wear a scarf, one scarf, I need to wear three. <laughs> but I didn't quite think it through enough because I got to tell you, it's warm up here with this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to jettison these scarves and uh, hopefully I don't choke myself here. But uh, well, it's good to have a little fun in it. 
Now, uh, in the update series, we've been examining the big picture of the purposes of Glencourt Church. Now, we do this because we want to stay in step with what God wants to do in and through us. We've, we've learned that. We've learned that God wants more from us than obedience, as important as that is. He wants us to have a changed heart, a transformed heart. God wants us in relationship with him through Jesus Christ. He wants us to surrender ourselves to Christ in order that we will know him personally. These are things that we, we are learning. In this union with Christ, we become acted upon and we become shaped by that transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this transformation in character comes from being loved unconditionally in God. Now, if we truly want to change, if we want to be disciples of Christ in, in the fullest sense, we must surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The past two weeks, Pastor Tim and Pastor Betsy shared what it means to be in Christ, to have our character transformed by the Holy Spirit, and how we are equipped by God to live in the community. Now today, we're going to examine what it means to be a witness for Christ and to be in service to him. So here's a couple questions for you. What do you do? What do you do? when God comes calling? What should you say? How should all that go? The way you answer can change your life and possibly the lives of many others. Now let me explain by using the life of an Israelite named Isaiah as an example. In 739 B.C., Isaiah was brokenhearted. He was burdened for the state of his nation. Israel had developed commercially, militarily, yet it was just rotting spiritually. It was a corrupt nation. It was riddled with sin. Isaiah loved God passionately and longed to have his life make a difference. I was thrilled to hear the report from camp where there were these kids saying, I want my life to make a difference in the world. My challenge to you is when did you ask yourself that question? Do I want my life to make a difference in this world? What a wonderful place to be, to be passionately in love with Christ to the point you say, Lord, I want to make a difference in the world. This young man was given a vision that only a handful of humans have ever seen. In Isaiah 6, 1, we read the words, I saw the Lord. Isaiah saw the Lord. He was taken in a vision to the throne room of the almighty God. He didn't even try to describe God. Because you see, God is truly indescribable. He is, he is literally beyond words. You see, God is infinite. So when we use adjectives like awesome, glorious, majestic, powerful, kind, wise, compassionate, we're only giving a, a glimpse of, a tiny glimpse of the real thing. In the midst of the vision, Recorded in Isaiah 6. God calls out, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now this call, it, it must have resonated deep within the heart of Isaiah. Because he didn't hesitate to respond. I, I, I can almost vision him in heaven with all these miraculous sights around him. And God calls out, you know, uh, whom shall I send? Who will go for us, and Isaiah raises his hand. He could not wait. Remember that kid in class, that there's always a kid in class? I was never that kid. <laughs> he raises his hand, he shouts out, Lord, send me, send me, send me over here. The angels. God. Now this, this short, 
effective response was answered by God immediately, who sent Isaiah to Israel with a message of redemption for his people. At the time of Isaiah's vision, up to the present time, God sees the needs of our world and is calling his people to share the message of redemption. And that's more than just the Roman way of pointing out how to be saved. Redemption includes maybe feeding somebody, clothing somebody, helping somebody begin to understand that there can be a different way in their life. That's redemption in a broad sense. God sees billions of people in our world today who don't know him. Of course he sees the hungry. He sees the homeless. He sees the sick. He sees the lonely. He sees all the needs. But he also sees many Christians wasting their lives on things and activities of no eternal value. And so he cries out, whom shall I send Who will go for us? We must remember John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. And Matthew 28, 16 through 20. We read of God's call to all who follow him. Everyone. To witness and to serve. This call is not limited by geography. It's not limited by culture, language, or people groups. God's heart aches for lost people everywhere, all over the world. And I pray, God, let my heart ache for people around me. God's plan for mankind is mankind. He generally does not use angels. He generally does not use miraculous signs to spread the gospel. He uses people who are committed to him. He uses those who are all in, as we say. Now, God doesn't only see the world's needs. He's not in heaven observing all of it and going, yeah, there's a world need right there. There's one there. I, I see that need. I see that need. No, no, no. He offers solutions to those needs. At this very moment, and I am telling you this, this is as true a thing as you're ever going to hear. He sees you. That's right, you. As a potential answer to a need. He is asking the question of all of us. Are you available? Will you witness? Will you serve in my name? Will you go to Turkey? Will you go to Glendora, Laverne, Covina? Will you go to your neighbor? Crying out loud, will you go across the patio? Is there any place you will go? When Isaiah responded to God, he was saying, Lord, take all of me. I give you my past, I give you my present, I give you my future, I surrender all that's me to you, I give it all to you. That's what God is calling all of us to. There is an exception with that. All our dreams, all our hopes and aspirations, here I am, send me, I'm available, use me. That's what God wants to hear from us. Do you want to honor and serve God and make a difference in the world? Is that the desire of your heart? Now there are three things that are, that are true for all of us here today. We need God. We need each other. And others need us. You can make an extraordinary difference if you're all in for witness and service. I challenge you to ask yourself these questions. What has God gifted, trained, or prepared me to do? What breaks my heart? What situations make me righteously angry? 
What cause will I spend the rest of my life addressing or causes? What would I die for? Today, God is calling his people to witness and to service. Maybe over the past few weeks, you know God's been working on you. Maybe you're hearing his call right now to something different in your life. Will you answer, here I am, send me. I offer you now some words of inspiration from a song entitled, We Believe by Newsboys. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Can I get an amen on that? We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. Can you rejoice in that? We believe in the crucifixion. Raise your hand if you believe that. You believe that. We believe that he conquered death. That's what we're about. We believe in the resurrection that is going to happen someday. And we want to be a part of that. That's what we believe, don't we? And we believe he's coming back again, we believe. He is coming back again. And I want to be in a place in my life where I'm ready to, ready to meet him in the air, whatever that looks like. I'm halfway there now. <laughs> but not only that. I want God to use me to work in and through me so that there can be somebody else who comes to meet him in the air someday. And I know as we catch eyeballs going through a cloud that they can say, I'm here partly because of your ministry to me. Oh, what a great thing that would be, wouldn't it? What a great thing. So let our faith, let it be more than anth anthems, my friend greater than any songs that we sing. And in our weakness, and in our temptations, we still believe we believe. Let the lost be found. Let the dead be raised. In the here and now, let love invade this church and let that love be spread out in our community. Do you want that? Amen. Let the church live loud. Our God will say, we believe, we believe. On the screen now, I'm gonna personalize this a little bit. And if this is something you wanna say today, I invite you to say it with me. Maybe you don't say it as loud as I'm saying it. You don't have to wave your hands up or anything. But if you today are saying to the Lord, I want the Holy Spirit to live in and through me. I want to be surrendered to his will. I want to be surrendered to his guidance in my life. I want to go out and be a difference in the, my community. If that's the desire of your heart, if you believe in the things we've talked about today, then I invite you to say these with me right now. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given me new life. I believe in the crucifixion. I believe he conquered death. I believe in the resurrection and that he's coming back again. I believe, I believe. God bless you today. Leave this place with the words on your mouth, I believe. I believe, and because of that belief and the empowering of the Holy Spirit in my life, I'm going to allow God to work in me to make a difference in this world. I hope that's the desire of your heart today. Praise team. Eric, let's come up. We're going to close, and I'll say a blessing for us at the end. God bless each one of you.